Hello everyone and this is this is chapter 5 in our intro to smoke simulation series. I've completely forgotten the title of the series. <laughs> so you know the smoke series that I've been doing. So this one actually there were only going to be four chapters in the smoke simulation stuff and then I was going to move on to pyro. But uh, Michael Stark, who is a VFX artist, sort of told me that there is an additional field available called divergence. So divergence allows you to expand and contract a smoke simulation or even a pyrosim. So we're going to take a look at that. And then along with it, we're going to take a look at another thing called sync, which is uh, useful for subtracting uh, smoke simulations. So it's like if your smoke sim is rising too much or it's going in directions you don't want it to go in, then you can use a sync to sort of, you know, subtract from it. Okay, so to start off with, I'll just do the usual stuff. So I'll take a pyro source. We'll say source smoke. So we have density and temperature. And then I'll click plus and we'll add in uh, divergence. Now, the thing you need to remember is uh, you can call this whatever you want. The only important thing is that once you come into the pyro solver, you make sure that this attribute or the field you have generated with that attribute connects to the right field. Okay, so even if instead of density, I call it smoke. So just make sure that when you go into the pyro solver, you connect the smoke field to the density field. Or instead of temperature, let's say I call it rise. So I make sure that the rise field connects to the temperature field. So as long as those fields are connected to the right things, you can call these whatever you want, but it just avoid confusion, you know, so you call it density and temperature because that's what the pyro solver is looking for. Okay, so and then just make sure that the mode is kept to volume scatter. So we have this. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'll just take a noise, we'll take an attribute noise. And I'm going to plug in, uh, we'll keep it to 1D and multiplicative. And the attributes we want to modify are density and temperature. Yeah, and we'll turn on animated. And just if you want, if you're not seeing it, then make sure you click on this little like locator icon and that will show it to you and just remap it uh, zero to one. And that's what we get. Okay. Then let's just convert this into volume fields. So we'll take the rasterize attribute. Right now I'm completely avoiding the divergence field. So you just, so we'll get a comparison to do. Okay. So let's just connect this and I'm going to pick up, you know, density and temperature and plug that in. Okay. And we should have this. Okay. This is perfect. Let's take a pyro solver and we'll plug this in and I'll just make a few basic changes. So I'm going to come in here to the solving and I'm going to lower the dissipation we will increase the disturbance and uh, let's add a little bit of turbulence. Okay. So if we press play, this is what we get. Okay. Now let's also do one more thing. I'll add in a light. So I'll just add a distant light. Yeah. And then just hide it. Okay. So we have this, which is good. So let's just sim for like a hundred frames. And what I can also do in here is let's just put in a wrangle. So I'll do an attribute wrangle. I'll do F at density multiplied by equal to, and we'll create a channel. So I can just animate the amount over time and we'll call it multiply. And let's create the parameter. I'll turn off the simulation for the time being. I'll come to about 80 and we'll just go from one to zero. Okay. Okay. So let's simulate this, see what we're getting. Okay. So this is fine. This is what we have. And then at around 80, it'll just die out. Okay. Perfect. So now let's add in the divergence field. Okay. So it's pretty simple. Like we'll just, uh, like the divergence field is already there. It has a default value of, I'm guessing it's a, it has a default value of one. Uh, let's do a couple of things, right? So I'll firstly, we'll add a noise to the divergence field and then we'll add it into the solver. Okay. So just take another noise. So I'll take an attribute noise 
and I'm going to set this to 1D and multiplicative and this will be divergence and I'll remap it. Uh, let's keep it 0 to 1 for now and animate it but I'll make it slightly bigger. So I'm going to turn off the visualization for my density and temperature and I'll just turn it on for my divergence. What I want to do is I want slightly bigger element size. Yeah. And then come into the rasterize and type in divergence. So we'll, we'll do a control C control V. So just do control C and come in here and control V. Yeah. And so you'll see a third volume has been added in there. Like if you look at the C, you have density, divergence and temperature. And now what you want to do is come into the pyro solver, come to sourcing. We don't need the burn because we don't have any flames or anything. We also don't need the velocity because we haven't added custom velocity. So just click plus and we're going to pick up divergence and the target field is divergence. There you go. So if we play right now, not nothing much is going to happen, like a little bit of change, but nothing much because the divergence value is too low. Okay. So what you want to do is we'll come into the attribute noise for the divergence. And I'm going to take the maximum to about five. Okay. Now, if you play this, see, there you go. So when it hits that value of five, it suddenly expands. And then I'm also going to take the negative, the minimum value and make it about minus three. So what you'll get is see, it'll expand and where it's minus, it sort of shrinks it in. So you get a very interesting, you know, field for the whole thing. See, and then it sort of, again, sort of blows up. So it's a very nice way to do you know, interesting effects. So you can do it multiple ways. Like you, we can also do it, uh, you know, using a mask from geometry and then multiply the mask with divergence. You can do a whole bunch of stuff like the same way that, uh, in the earlier lessons I had done it with density and temperature, you can do the same thing here. Okay. So, uh, now let's do something a little different, you know, just as a small addition. So you can see like what, what other things you can do. So let's say if we come into the solving and we have the turbulence. So what I'm going to do is we'll connect the turbulence to the divergence. Okay. So I'm going to duplicate this and we'll take a transform and I'll move this to one side and then we'll merge these together just so that I can show you the difference. Okay. So what we'll do is I'm going to take the turbulence and increase it. But in this one, like the one towards the right, I'm going to connect the turbulence to instead of the influence field being temperature, I'll con connect it to divergence. So what should happen is only when the smoke sort of blows up, you'll get turbulence in there. And when it's, when it shrinks, you won't get anything. So if you press play, you'll get, you know, a result that's slightly different from this one. See here, the turbulence is there all the time. And on the right one, when the field is not expanding, the turbulence sort of goes away. See here, you can still see the turbulence happening in there. So you can do interesting things like these. See, so this is smooth when it shrinks and only when it expands, it gets turbulence. Okay. So now let's take a look at, uh, how to delete a volume or how to delete a smoke sim. So let's say I don't want it to rise so much. So what I can do is, uh, let's get rid of this one and I'll get rid of those two. Okay. So we have this guy. So let's say I want like a certain ceiling, like over this limit, it shouldn't go. So what I can do is I can, let's say I take a box and I'll expand this a little bit like that. We'll keep it up here. Let me just see how high this is going. Yeah. Okay. So I think this should be good enough. Okay. And then we'll take a, we'll take a pyro source. And the field we want to create, we're going to call it sync. Again, you can call it anything you want. Okay. So we will call it sync. 
and uh, this is all fine just keep it to volume scatter maybe not as dense as this so i think this is okay yeah and then take a rasterize and we'll convert this to a volume so let's just call this sync yeah so you'll get a volume all right so now what you need to do is firstly we need to merge these together so just take a merge so you should see you know both of these and if you come into the pyro solver nothing is going to happen yeah, like it doesn't magically do anything so what you need to do is in the pyro solver come back to sourcing and we'll create a fourth source and what this will be is we'll say sync the target field is density but the change is instead of an addition it will be a subtract and now you'll see the difference so if you press play once it reaches that level see if the nice thing is it doesn't just completely flatten out like you do get a little bit of it sort of poking through so it doesn't look like bad but you can do something like this so what we can do along with this like if it doesn't if you don't want it to like completely sort of fade out like that let's say if we take the pyro source and what i want to do is let's say if we can give it a gradient so i'll come into i'll take an attribute warp or uh, yeah i have if you have the lab tools installed you have the lab color gradient let's see if we can use this yeah okay so this is fine so what we're doing is we're generating a black to white value now let's do something let's take a wrangle what i want is i want the volume to sort of fade out so i'm going to take the f at sync and multiply it with the at cd dot r and if you look at the volume rasterize see it should do this see you can see it fading out and if i come into the color gradient and make changes see you'll be able to you'll see what it does so what this should do is it should sort of you know eat up our volume a little more gently instead of getting that absolute flat line that we were getting so if i press play it should fade out a little better yeah see there you go so that's a lot better like if i do a comparison you know like without this stuff so let me just do a duplication here okay so i'm going to take all of this do control c control v i'll turn off these two guys or delete these over here okay and then do control c control v yeah so this comes here and there so this one is just flat and this one has a gradient Okay, and then we'll take two pyro solvers. So control C, control V, and let's take a transform. So just to see the difference between like a gradient-based uh, volume, so that it's sort of gently fading out, as opposed to just having like a flat single vo single value volume that we have. Okay, so we'll just take a merge and connect these, and let's play. So see, when it reaches that point, you actually get that sharp line. Whereas with this guy, it sort of just, you know, fades out a lot better. Yeah, see, so this looks a lot more, this looks much more natural than this one where you're just getting this absolute sharp line. So yeah, if you haven't installed the lab tools from uh, from side effects make sure you install those like it has some nice tools in there which make your life simpler and you can take multiple syncs like it's not that you can only take one as long as you merge them and they're both called like all of these are called sync like if let's say i want to create like a solid wall on this side and nothing goes in there you can do stuff like that as well okay so it just makes life easier all right so this is pretty much it so this is uh, how you can use the divergence field to you know expand and contract volumes and how you can use sync to you know subtract from uh, volumes or smoke simulations essentially okay so if you want to you know control the height or control the area uh, of the smoke simulation you can do it with a with a sync 
All right, so with the next lesson, we'll start with the uh, pyro simulation.